Susan, oh, every, welcome. Everybody's live. Yes! Oh. We're here, we're here. We're still here. Thank you so much for coming to the oh, show. Thanks I, I, for having me. I missed you guys. Uh, you grew a beard since that's how long it's been. Yeah, I've grown up. I went through puberty <laughs> since I've seen you. I'm, I'm very it's a fantastic thing. Uh, what, how was your summer? Working, working, working. You Did were. a bunch of movies, yeah. Wait, I heard about one movie you're doing that's a DC... DC comic, Blue Beetle. Blue and Beetle. And what's fabulous about it is it's the first Latinx hero that has his own movie, and it's really... That's major. Even better, all of the Mexican, uh, because his family is Mexican and yeah. all the actors were Mexican or Mexican-American, and it's in Spanish. So it's subtitled. Congratulations, that's a big deal. I'm, of course, the bad guy. <laughs> I'm the white military industrial complex, so I had a fabulous time. Wow. Because there's nothing better than being bad. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Uh, oh, since, since you've been coming here, the, I mean, I would say probably late night you've been a friend of our show, and I appreciate it. Every time you're on, it's fun. You've brought your dogs here before. Yeah, yeah. my little creatures all passed away. Uh, yeah, you, I can't talk about because I still get upset. It was about a year ago, and I was feeling sad. And um, one of my sons said, "All right," I said, "I can't get another dog. I just can't, you know." And he said, "Well, then get cats." And I'm by. So. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you're, so you're, you mean you like dogs and I'm cats? I'm fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like dogs? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm very it. fluid where yeah. animals are concerned. But are you? If you're I've dog... had cats before. Yeah. I, then I had dogs. Now I have cats. Oh. So um, he found this <laughs> advertisement. You know, I was rescuing them. Yeah. And he found this cat. And when I saw the picture of this cat, it just made me laugh. Yeah. And you, I think you have a picture and of this have, cat. This is Ida? This is Ida. Have you ever seen a sadder-looking cat? <laughs> Doesn't she look like the saints that you used to pray to? <laughs> in, uh... <laughs> now, look at the frown. They said, you know, she's very serious, which I should have realized was a red flag, but I didn't. A serious cat. They're a all kind of serious, cat, right? Meaning not social. Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Um, when I got her, she was very feral. She was five, and it took me a long time to get her. And I thought, you know, she needs a friend. That's what she needs is a little friend. Okay. So then I got another cat who was the sweetest. Now, I want to preface this by saying I have a tiny, tiny apartment, like really tiny apartment. I moved out of my family when it's so small I don't even have doors, right? Okay. So I have this other little cat that was kind of sick and so very fragile and just as sweet as can be. And so we called her Sweetie. Okay. Do you have a picture of Sweetie? I have a picture of Sweetie, but I have a picture of Sweetie looking very sweet. But I feel like, is this Ira? Well, you have to separate them. So this is... Right, uh, so let me just show you this. There's... <laughs> Ida did not want a friend. Here's and... Ida staring down like... Here's Johnny! Exactly. He's gonna murder Sweetie. Yeah. And every and I was really frightened because Sweetie was really fragile because she'd had this operation when I got her. She well, anyway, it's yeah. tragic, but so, so then these... I thought, okay, this went on for a year, and every opportunity she got, she would beat her up. So I had to be very careful with them, right? So what do you do? I, could, I, was a, I, I didn't want to give away Ida, who was the bitch in the group, but I didn't. <laughs> so what do you do? You get another cat, right? <laughs> so I got a male cat this time. I thought, this is going to change the dynamic. And I got Harry, who's at, who was only nine months old. So he was, I thought, maybe he's a little more malleable. You have to... he's, he was younger, and he was, hasn't been on the street as long. Yeah. And Harry is just the sweetest guy ever. But of course, what happened was that he plays with Ida because he jumps all around because he's a young cat. And, and <laughs> Sweetie's like, no, get away. I don't want to touch. And he lies oh on his back gosh, and he does all this voices stuff now? trying to do. You and become a cat lady. I'm you become a cat lady. Yeah, so I don't know. The question is now, do I get a dog to try to take care of this? Please, no, no, it has to stop. Well, I don't know if anyone else out there has a plan, you know. Yeah, no, this is good. I have catnip everywhere. I've got these plug-in things with pheromones. It's just nothing <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to so ask... that's my cat story. I, I want to ask you about And my this. son said... Yes? 
who, gave, who got the cats for me, or the first one anyway, said, you know, it's very interesting with men. If you are a guy, when you're picking a guy, you know, a, a man who likes a dog wants immediate gratification and someone who's very dependent on them because dogs understand that they can't exist without you. But cats, on the other hand, they can deal with someone. If a man has cats, then he knows that you can be independent and he's not as, you know, needy as a dog lover that needs that tail wagging as soon as you come in the house. <laughs> Who said this to you? Uh, don't you think that's true? No. <laughs> well, you obviously have dogs. Dogs. <laughs> Are you psychic? Are you psychic now? I, 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 I want to ask you. I want to. I want to ask you about this because I think it's very, very. Uh, cool and interesting, and I want to know the story behind it. It seems like you always wear this jacket, you bring mm -hmm. this jacket out every now and then, you, you break it out, and it's a very cool Letterman leather, it's like a Simpsons jacket, and the internet goes nuts when you wear it, because they go, what is this jacket? And even no, though- they a go nuts because I'm still wearing that jacket after yeah. many years, and they're like, what's wrong with this person that she's still wearing? No, Vo Vogue, Vogue had a headline, has Susan Sarandon been wearing the same jacket since 1995? Vogue, of all people. Faux pas. Faux Sorry. pas, said fashion faux yeah, pas. Yeah, that's from The Simpsons, and when you did, a, I don't know if they still do this, but I did a few voices for them, and I, The Simpsons, and just brilliant and they gave me this jacket and then as they added more characters they would put patches new patches on the jacket now I haven't I don't know if they still but yes that's is there something wrong with not throwing out your clothes I mean maybe it's just because I'm getting old but I want to hold on to my old thing no I, I love that you have this but I mean but it looks great on you is thank it, you do you, you just I'll tell you what when I wear this jacket everybody smiles and so I'm actually changing the characteristics of New York, because people that see this <laughs> jacket go, cool jacket. Uh, I'm spreading smiles. You really are spreading smiles. Well, you're such a uh, friend of our show. I wanted Get to give you. Get off my case. I though. wanted to give you a little gift. Oh. This is a, <laughs> it says, it oh says Susan God. on it. Let me see. But does, I think we. Yeah. What about patches, though? Do we get, like, the band? Yeah, I could send you some, some patches. Can we get, like, all the faces of the yeah, roots? Yeah, oh, the roots. Oh, wait. This is the new... This is the new... Yeah! That's the new jacket! What are you looking... Come on, now. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's... Uh, that, that is our I, gift to I you. I feel just... super cool. This is the best goodie bag so far of all the talk shows. <laughs> uh, you're already recognizable. You're Susan Sarandon, but a little Susan on there, it kind of makes people smile. And, make, let's... and they don't confuse me with Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, let's and talk... also, you know, if I lose my mind, I'll go, oh, right, I'm Susan. I'm Susan, yeah, of course. Uh, Let's talk about Monarch. This is a big deal. Got Let's a lot of good buzz Monarch. here. Yes. This Sunday, uh, one of the most anticipated new shows this fall. Uh, can you set up what the show's about? Country Music Dynasty. I'm the head of the dynasty. I will do anything for my family to keep my dynasty going. Yes. And I have two daughters who, you know, that could be trouble, and a son, and uh, Trace, Trace Atkins, Atkins, who's a you know, certified major country star. Oh, my gosh. She's uh, like eight foot nine, by the way. And talks like, and very <laughs> Johnny Cash. Very voice. And so it's, you know, a guilty pleasure of lots of uh, intrigue and secrets and... Who's taking over the family biz and, and country fraternity music and, and lies and, yeah, yeah. Do I, yeah. That's what and I'm talking else, about. Yeah. I love that. Shotguns going off. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's Susan Sarandon in Monarch. Take a look at this. It's time to show you what you're wearing tomorrow at the musicale. Ta-da! <gasps> oh! <laughs> it's perfect. You're perfect. And you know, Nikki, I never wanted just to be a star. I wanted to create a dynasty, and I did. We always knew that with your God-given beauty and talent that it was going to be your destiny to continue our legacy. Whoa! Susan Sarandon, check out the 
the season premiere of Monarch this Sunday after NFL on Fox. Hey, hey.